And actually, as I went over to him after the like just after the head's head, I went, and he looked at me as if to say, "You." Pro boxing fans here in Riyadh, Eddie Hearn, you're a ballsy man. I'm gonna go back to yesterday first of all. You and Artur Tebiev, mate, I've got to say you got some big bollocks there, man. Nah, listen, it's all fun and games. None of it, mate. You know, people talking about, oh, was there a push on the stage between promoters and like, of course, this is a show, baby. This is what you want to see. You want to see drama. You want to see controversy. You want to have opinion. You want to think someone's an arsehole. You want to love the beef. It, like, as long as you're talking about it, everything's great. And um, yeah, yesterday was about creating a little bit of drama and a little bit of noise at a press conference that probably would have been quite flat without it, you know? So I'm looking down, His Excellency's there with a big smile on his face. And look at Arthur Betterbeer's personality. Shines through, like he's got a great personality. We want to see it, and that was what my reference was to the arrogant part. But fighters sometimes don't have someone to bring that out of them, so they just get used to going, we'll see. Yes. No. It's like, fuck me, mate. Can we have a little bit more, please? Like, if that was me, I'll, like, over the years, I'd be going, Arta. Because you know the thing is, right? I host presses. Right? I'm the only person that does it. I'm the only person that can do it in the way that I do it. I would be at this point going, Arta, blah, 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 blah. No. Arta, blah, 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 blah. We'll see. Arta, not being funny, mate. Any chance of a little bit more out of you, right? And then it's like, then it, then it starts. That, like, you've got to try and find a way to do it. It's very difficult to do. But that's what I did, you know, I mean, Dev told me, I might ask you about you calling him arrogant. And then that's how you go with it. And he was brilliant. He was brilliant. He played his part perfectly. And after that, you hope that actually he doesn't want to kill you. He just realises actually that was great for the show. Now, if he does want to kill you, that's a risk that you take. You just hope that's not the case. And actually, as I went over to him after the like just before, after the head's head, I went, and he looked at me as if to say, "You are one fat prick." And I was like, and he shook my hand. But I, I think he knows. It's the game, it's the business, do you know what I mean? You know, I asked you the same question actually about the arrogant part in the last interview and people commented on that interview oh. saying, saying, Anthony Joshua did the same thing against Wallin, why did it? Yeah, not, not, not like, no, not consistently. Okay. Look at when we flew him over to London yeah, yeah. for the press, I didn't say a word. Like, but, but do I think he's arrogant? It's just a line, like I say a lot of things. I actually saw I got a lot of st a stick for saying he was arrogant, people didn't like it. I mean, I say so much, I can't, Yo, I will do after this. Yeah, one sec. I, I can't, I can't get everything right all the time. All I can try and do is make the event, make the occasion as big as I can, create a little bit of noise, still try and act with integrity, and go from there. I know you guys don't probably like him, but Chris Eubank Jr. Is, you know he's pulled it out this week, man. Came yesterday with the sword that he knocked your head off with that sword, by the way. I've said in in numerous interviews, I, I don't dislike Chris Eubank Jr. He's just not really my cup of tea. But what he does, when he does that kind of stuff, brilliant. Like, that's what we need in boxing. Ben Whittaker. Like, Ben Whittaker should really be a superstar. Yeah? But Eubank is Eubank. Don't forget that I grew up watching his father wear jodhpurs and a monocle and a cane walking down the street, driving a fucking dumper truck upright. Like, this is the show. Yeah. Now look, Chris is 35. He's he's coming to the end. But that sort of stuff's great. I encourage that from fighters. Do you know what I mean? Doesn't mean that, you know, when he calls me a scumbag, you honestly think that I care what Chris Eubank calls me. Like, it get no, but same with him really. I don't think he cares. Listen, unless it gets personal and there's something set like. But generally, like we, Chris understands the game. He actually thinks that I set up that Conor Ben thing. Yeah, I was going to ask you that question. Listen, I was going to ask you that question. setting something up like that is the most cringe thing going. Some promoters tell fighters what to say on Twitter. Say this, say this about him, say this about him. Hey, that ain't for me. Now, if we're sitting there having a coffee and he walks past, I, I, I don't even have to say anything to Conor. I know what he's about to do and it will go off again tomorrow night. Do you know what I mean? 
And it's not about, oh, let's make it go off tomorrow night. Eubank's going to win. He's going to come over to Conor Ben, and Conor Ben's going to go, what, what? And he's going to go, you, blah, blah, blah. And Conor's going to lose his rag. He's probably going to go under the bottom rope, and it's all going to go off. You can't stop that. These guys will be trying to grab him and everything. But Connor's a volatile kid. This ain't a game. He's not. Connor's not acting. See, Eubank with his sword. That's an act. Connor's just wants to just destroy him. And that's all the, you know, the, the the rage of what's happened over the last, you know, two years. What's uh, Turkey Alishik's? Uh opinion on this fight because he has gone viral he's, I think he's hit 4 million yeah, yeah. across platforms loves it God, he, listen Turkey Ella Sheik is a smart guy that knows a big fight and he knows the size of Eubank Ben um, good to be uh, out of the bench shalom sort of thing today uh, Frank and Ben were there is it, was it good not to be involved today uh, not really I mean I like to be involved but it was. I didn't really I didn't really see a great deal, um, but he just sort of dived over Frank and shoved him out of the way, and then, yeah, I was just like, what's going on? But, again, same kind of thing. Like, we don't have to really... I think getting on with people obviously helps making fights, but also, a bit of beef every now and again. Like, I don't know, but... Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, you'd have to speak to them what, what actually happened, but I saw a little... You know. But do you like the change in attitude from Ben Shalom? He seems to be throwing a few more punches now. He has come out saying you and Frank Warner love birds. You know, it's one organisation, match room on Queensbury. There are a few things said. Yeah, I mean, you got you know you got to. I mean, look, obviously it's you know TikTok time with a, with the um, TV contract, and it's crunch time. You know, and it, listen, I wish him all the best. Like it's it's not easy. Yeah, I've 15 years in this game and been through a lot of shit, but. You know, Frank, and Frank is, what, 73? He's been in this game for, what, 30, 40, I don't know, 40 years? He's probably, you know, it's Bob Aaron. These, these are resilient people, you know? Um, so it's not for everybody, but we need we need as many promoters as possible. He, actually, I spoke to him, and he said that he's got more pay-per-view stars than, than yourselves, uh, you know, right now with potentially fighters coming through. Do you agree with that? What pay-per-view stars are they? I think he's alluded to Ben Whitaker, he's got Chris Eubank Jr. I mean, Ben Whitaker, what? At some point, I think he's saying he's trying to build a stable. Point. Well, I mean, yeah, at some point, I mean, at some point, um, I might be ripped to shreds, but I've been saying that for about 20 years. Um, look, ben, Ben's got a decent stable of fighters. I mean, you know, um, when was their last show? Uh, August, and they've got one coming up. I don't know if that's the last one this year. I know there's a lot of fighters waiting to get out and that's always the way we've all promoted a traditional company so look TV is the key you know as long as you have a TV contract you can build a stable and yeah I, I don't I don't think Boxer have got a bad stable I don't you know it's not I don't know I mean we have obviously the best stable in the world because we're a global company so when you're throwing in Boots and Bam and Shakur Stevenson and Katie Taylor and AJ and fucking everybody like obviously but in Britain yeah, he's, he's competitive, and that's great for boxing. Cool. Eddie Ann, thank you so much, mate. Cheers. Mate. Cheers.